Welcome back, welcome back, organic fanatics. What up, what up, what up? Bienvenido, mi gente. Welcome back. I appreciate you guys checking in. On to some, we talking about some next news, but we appreciate y'all for checking in. I appreciate you guys for liking, subscribing. Tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell a friend. Uh, let's grow the platform. Let's let people know we talking truth over here. We spitting that truth. Um, uh, let's get into it, man. I just like going into it. I know we got to do the recaps and all that good stuff. But if you check the, the last video, the last video we were talking about possible situations of what we could be doing if we stay prudent and stand packed without making any trades. Um, however, something did happen yesterday. It's just flying under the radar. I know what they're talking about. So the non-extension of Scott Perry, the general manager of the New York Knicks. Now, people are kind of brushing it off or just saying, ah, oh, it's just it's nothing. It's just they're not extending him. However, this is just my opinion. I've heard uh, what Ian Begley was talking about there as well. Good, good uh, article by Ian Begley and Knicks Film School. Um, so Scott Perry, they didn't sign him. Now, you know, he's, he's the general manager. Now, what do the general managers do? They're in charge of all player basketball operations, including trades, signings, and scouting. And based off that, just thinking about what their job is, and they're in charge of all basketball operations, needless to say, if they're not extending him, it wasn't, and if you heard before, sometimes last year through the summer when they were looking at people, the trade that was supposed to happen with RJ and Donovan, there was conflicting reports, and it was always always two sided. So some of the management thought of one thing, other side of management thought about the other. I'm pretty sure that had to involve something with Scott Perry on there. Um, now remember uh, when you're talking about Dolan, Dolan had this bicycle. Had a race team, you know, of this bicycle. He wanted somebody to take over. Um, Leon was the guy to take over this bicycle that was broken, used, a good bike, but it was a used beat up bike. Follow the analogy here. And then uh, you had Scott Perry, and you also had uh, Steve Mills, who are basically training wheels. Got the got the bike vertical, got it running, not running super efficiently, but got it operational. Uh, and then stay, uh, then you got Leon who started riding the bike, took off one of the training mills, uh, tra training wheels, which is, a uh, mills. And now that mills was gone, it's riding. Okay. But it's not riding a hundred percent. So now you take off the other training wheel, which is Scott Perry. And again, these were the prior regimes, good people to Dolan. Uh, but now the bike's going to run basically with no training wheels on there. Um, a GM, if we go back to what they do, scouting. And then, which I thought Scott Perry was a pretty good scout. He has a good eye for talent for the most part on the scouting aspect of it. Uh, signing and trades, I think that's where him and Steve Mills had, they were not the greatest at it. They did pretty good. They got us back on, on track and did some good signing and trades and getting some picks on there. So they did pretty good. But I believe that this non-extension of the contract is heavily predicated on what's going to happen this summer. And starting actually from now on who they're going to get, who can, can they go after. This is the last year before the CBA, which starts next offseason, of contracts so they can get rid of. So there's going to be a lot of teams making pivot moves this year. If they didn't make the organization, who can they get rid of? Contracts that they're, they're looking to shed because of they either have to sign some players for next year. These super maxes, as you see with the Jalen Browns, the $250 million and a lot of big money is going to happen out and have to either commit to that or they have to move off from these prior to the C, uh, the CBA happening. So as quiet as kept as people are thinking, I think there's going to be some major moves. And I think um, you're looking at Leon. Leon is an agent. Who better to know the ins and outs of not only players, the evaluation with uh, Brock Aller and the, the capologists we have of of making the right decision. So I think there were moves that they didn't like that Scott Perry made or the type of assessment to their assets that they were getting. So if they were, you know, what he was, how he was negotiating, I think Leon feels that he can do a better job, which I believe he can. He's an agent is what he does. So I think he's going to take over the helms in that aspect. And I think there were moves that he probably felt should have been made that weren't made. So, I think it's going to be something sneakily big that people aren't talking about. But just keep an eye on that. 
I'm going to be looking for moves. And even though they're not extending him, I feel they basically politely gave him a force resignation. And even though they didn't extend them, I'm pretty sure they removed them of his duties from here forward. So I'm pretty sure Leon or some and, and the others are making the decisions on player trades, player assessment, player scouting, as we've been talking about. So I think there's opportunities that maybe they didn't feel that were handled properly within the last year or two of what they could have gotten either out for their players or what they could have gotten in return for their players. So I think that's what we're looking at now with the Scott Perry uh, basically firing. I mean, resign, not extended, whatever you want to call it. But if you work in the, the, the workforce, you already know what that means. That means they gave them the polite boot because they're trying to keep noise to minimum. They're trying to make it not look like the organization is not under control and things of that nature, So, which is a smart thing. But I do believe either you're going to see another agent at that position or just Leon takes over from that position and handles it because I think he ideally, even though he's a president and has other things he runs, I think this is where his skill set truly lends itself. So you're looking at a uh, getting along with players. He was an agent, so he dealt with not only players and coaches. He understands them. He understands their value. He understands what they want. He understands what teams want because he was a negotiator in between. So he's the biggest mediator between all the aspects, not only teams, players, and coaches, he was a mediator in there. So this is what his skill set truly lends out to. So I think the removal of Scott Perry basically removes the thorn and gives him the autonomy to make these trades, make these scouting, you know, even though he has other scouts looking out there, but I believe this is where he's going to uh, make his move. So I think there's going to be players, maybe some that we don't think, or some that we probably thought weren't attainable, that would probably... Be more attainable now. Uh, we got to look at some other teams, the Torontos, um, possibly the Clippers, even though they're damaged goods. But again, they're diminishing returns on some of those assets or players. And if they're injury prone, what can you get from them? The Chicago's, um, as he was talking about. So there's going to be some opportunities. Uh, again, for Randall, I don't. Anything is possible, especially now with these big contracts. Could they move other players? For Randall, this would be the best time to get something for him. But I would believe it would have to be something equivalent or either with a greater projection or that fits the mold of what they're trying to build culturally and that they would, the player would fit with a, a Randall or, or whatnot. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see going forward. I also believe, if as Ian was saying, as much as I don't like it, if player, paper, players, sorry, players are going to be moved, they'll be... Big key assets is going to be either Randall or, believe it or not, R.J. Barrett. I ride with R.J. Barrett, but uh, Jeremy Cohen did a good uh, breakdown as far as stats. And I know you was, uh, R.J. wasn't efficient, but some of those stats were glaring. He's still young, and there's still a lot of upside considering he's giving you uh, almost 20 a season per game and then played big in the playoffs, which is when it really matters. So that's going to be a huge option so i think they're going to be listening to a lot of options so there's going to be a lot of calls this summer there's going to be a lot of possible player movement from a lot of teams which would open up doors to trades so as quiet as it's going to be uh, maybe not the players you think but uh, we got to look at players that would fit the mold of what we're doing i think it'll be either randall or rj being moved Considering the consistency in the regular playoff season, Randall getting doubled all the time, I think uh, RJ would probably be the likelier candidate to be moved if there's a two guard, a defensive, a three and D wing, something like that, because he has the most promise. He's the youngest. Um, he's he's good, even though he's inefficient. I think it gives more upside to a team that would trade for him. That there's a benefit for for growth or for him to adjust those things, which I believe he would too. I think he's going to break out of that. I think he's going to work on being efficient and better shot making. So I would hate to lose him, but as far as statistic wise, it looks like he may be the one to, that they'd put on as the biggest dangling for people. So, so the youth is what is going to bring more upside. Um, He's scoring quite a bit now. I don't see us going for an older veteran, so maybe someone in 
Randall's age or a little bit younger, somewhere around that that age bracket if we're going to be trading for someone, uh, someone promising. But that's why to get something back for Randall and his productivity is going to be difficult. But again, that's where the scouting, that's where the sign and trades happen. So I look for Leon to be making the moves. Um, so I think that Scott uh, Perry non-resigning is significant. I don't believe he's going to be actually in the role from now to whenever his contract expires. Because why would you give someone who you're not going to extend the autonomy for the remainder of the season for such a big key season between now and the cap season for next year to make these choices and you're going to let him go at the end of this year? That doesn't make any sense to me. So I don't believe that he would be making any of the choices moving forward. I believe they said it early enough to where the season's over. It won't bring up no drama, low key, no smoke out there. But if you're key to what's happening, you'll know that that's something pretty big. So I thought it was going to be quiet, but it does make a lot of sense that being that the CBA is coming up at the end of next season, that teams that either in the middle of the road or that are not doing well have a lot of have a lot of cap that they're at close to their cap or they're spending a lot of money that especially maybe not high market teams teams not in big markets um, you may start seeing some of them moving off some players you know maybe charlotte's you know stuff like that so we got to see some movement i think you're going to see some of them now if they got big player contracts do they want to move out um, even Toronto, like the Siakam, he's okay, and I know Siakam, people like Siakam. I, I like them too, but if he hit, if he made an All NBA team, which I believe he did, don't quote me. Or if you know, comment on the the channel. If he made an All NBA team, he also qualifies for a Supermax two fifty plus, uh, just like Jalen Brown. So those are two players that you're gonna you're gonna have to pay. And are they worth two hundred and fifty million dollars? Have they taken their team to the next level? I don't think that uh, value is something that's worth it. And Boston should be kicking themselves now for not trading Jalen Brown for KD. Could be. I mean, maybe because of his age and Jalen Brown's a little bit younger, but that, that's an option on him. But that's their bad. That's their bad. Um, so tell me what you think. I think just a quick little video. That I think that Scott Perry non-extension is something significant. Uh, I think Leon takes the helms. If they do fill that position... Uh, for the general manager, I do believe it'll be some kind of CAA connection. I do believe it'll be an agent because that position is key. Uh, I think an agent would fill that role much better, even than the more than the president option on there. So look for either an agent or Leon Rose to be making all the decisions on both ends. So this is a natural fit for him. No one's a better negotiator than an actual agent. He was a top agent out there. He's had multiple clients um look for that caa connection still i think that caa connection is going to be pretty heavy this year from players um different people that they can get so again consider he's prudent he's smart he's not going to get fleeced so i don't think it's going to be a major home run swing unless he's going to benefit maybe he takes on contracts this year that maybe expire in a year or something like that uh, and get picks out of it. So I can see some more pick acquisitions, maybe, you know, get some expiring contracts this year besides offloading the Evan Fournier, you know, that this could be something that could pay off for people who want to free up money, taking on a, a Derek Rose and taking on a Evan Fournier now could be a, a huge asset because that's going to free up a lot of money for teams. Um, so people were saying that doesn't have a lot of, didn't have a lot of weight, but I think being this year and a cap year coming up for next year, I think that's actually pretty huge. Uh, you can shed millions of dollars. So I think uh, Evan Fournier would have value that you don't have to add picks. I don't think you're going to have to add any picks to get rid of Evan because teams are going to need to shed money, a lot of money, because that cap coming uh, next year. Uh, Derek Rose's $14, $15 million, I think they foresaw that as well, that that's going to be something of value. Maybe not only for us, but another team. We shed $15 million. We just get rid of Derrick Rose's contract instead of getting him rid of him to another team, which we could. That could if you're going to get something back for it, if you can get some uh, maybe a pick. So I think uh, the Derrick Rose and Evan Fournier would actually be pretty valuable to get some kind of pick. Um, Blazers are looking to make a move. 
do they want another young talent? Do they want uh, people talking about Julius Randle? What could they give us other than an eighth pick that would be of a, a value? That would be a, a better return for Randle. I don't see any other player that they have there. Maybe a Jeremy Grant on the eighth pick. Uh, that may seem like a lot, but if we're going to have to pay Grant, they're getting a, a Julius Randle all-star, all-NBA player um, who has a good contract. So the fact that we would have to maybe get Grant if he's willing to sign, maybe some kind of sign and trade and get that eighth pick, that's something uh, to look out for there. But a lot of interesting moves that could happen. So um, I think it's going to be a busy season. Maybe that we may not hear about, but uh, they're going to be taking a lot of phone calls, making a lot of phone calls. And uh, I think that was pretty big. So tell me what you think about the Scott Perry uh, on extension. Do you think I'm on, on point? Do you think it's uh, boo-boo? Do you want them to bring in Rob Palenka? <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Bob Myers, not, not Palinka, but Bob Myers, who just left um, Golden State. I think he saw the writing on the wall. I think he, he was trying to make moves, and they didn't, uh, they're not budging on it. They're going to have to pay a lot of players. They're going to have to pay uh, a lot of players this year a lot of money. And does he see that as a successful journey? I think maybe he was trying to make room and maybe trade some players and they didn't want to budge. So he said, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm out of the ship before it sinks. So he made that move, but I'm not sure if he's going to be coming for us. I don't, I don't believe that's going to be a job that we would give him here. So I think that'll be a Leon or another agent on there. I think Leon just takes it home for that. Just handles it now until they get somebody else. But I think Scott, uh, Leon Rose would do a really good job on that. Let me know what you think. Let me know, is, is, is it something? Is it nothing? Or is it everything? <laughs> um, so I think it's something big. I think it uh, shows a direction. So basically, this was the first chess move. What you're seeing now, I think it was a chess move by Leon Rose. I think this was the first move in the game of chess that we're seeing. Again, it's the back moves. It's the moves that you aren't paying attention to. You know, um, so I think this was a huge chess move, in my opinion. I think it was the first one on the board. I think it was a significant move. Um, so looking at the knight in front of your pawn, ready to take make a counter strike. I think it was a big move by Leon. And he's playing chess, y'all. 3D chess. This is a move that you didn't see as three-dimensional. You ain't seeing it. He tries to make it low like it's nothing, but it was a big move. So that's what I believe. I believe he made his first chess move out there. Chess is being played right now. And now a lot of teams have to pivot. There was some team, some coaches, uh, the Danny Ainges, the Ujiri from Toronto. They were trying to posture last year. They were trying to fleece as much as they could. But now they're going to have to pay some of these players. So all these other teams with a lot of heavy cap are going to have to shed salary. So a lot of people that were bluffing, trying to take advantage of the Knicks, I think we have a lot of advantage on our side. So, some chess is being played here. Let's see who wins this game. I got my money on on uh, Leon Rose. And again, we don't have to make a lot of moves. We can stay as we are and add incremental moves like I told you. Some other additional players and bet on our talent continue, continuing to grow. There's nothing that we have to do. We don't have to make a major move. We don't have to swing for the fences. Now it's up to the other teams to either make that move or we can still hold, ride with what we have, acquire more assets, uh, keep developing the youth, and then next year, just before the cap hits, uh, there could be a lot of teams in desperate, desperate situations. So we could be just holding on until next year, but I think the Scott Perry firing gives an opportunity for Leon Rose to be listening to trades, Leon Rose to be looking and scouting opportunities out there and the Brock Allards uh, and how we're setting this franchise. Remember, we got the people from Utah who set Utah's team there. Nobody wanted to play for Utah, so they had to build the right way. So we got those heads over here. So I think that's how we're building our Nick, uh, Nick team now. And I think Scott Perry wasn't making the greatest suggestions or getting the right uh, opportunities in 
and they felt that they can do better. So I think that's what's happening now. And it's going to be big. I think it's going to be pretty big here. I still think unless you get some huge player for Randall, equal or greater value, you're not going to see that. If something pops up, I wouldn't be surprised for an RJ trade. His contract is really good. He's young, the upside. So I think that would probably be a move if something happens. Um because they both can't play with each other, and you're going to get another star. Uh, I think it's going to be one of them that has to move. I think uh, power forwards are harder to come by, especially given that those stats that, that Randall gives. I think a small forward, shooting guard, you can get. Even though so, small forwards are what everybody's going for, but I think that position is something that you can trade bigger for. So, Rambling on, but nonetheless... Chess moves are being made. I think the Scott Perry uh, non-resigning was big. So let me know what you think. Thank you for checking in with your Organic Fanatics. Talk to us. Chat it up. Uh, still doing lives. We're just uh, assessing the off season. See what's happening now before we make any other videos. But just some quick little videos for you guys. But uh, what I think is happening today should be a major move. So peace.